welcome to uv physics academy so here we are discussing the solutions of uh, quantum computation this is the first question they are asking to show that these vectors are linearly dependent for example let us suppose n is the number of vectors given and m is the dimension of the vector space or hilbert space then here we have three conditions sometimes maybe n is greater than m or sometimes n equal to m or sometimes n less than m whenever the number of vectors given is greater than the dimension of the hilbert space we can say that these vectors are linearly dependent but whenever these two cases we cannot say directly so here we have to find the determinant we have to find the determinant of the matrix formed by uh, the vectors given as a columns and once you find the determinant here you will be having again two cases sometimes maybe determinant is equal to 0 or sometimes maybe a determinant is uh, not equal to 0 if a determinant is equal to 0 we can say these are uh, linearly dependent and not equal to 0 linearly not dependent and we can say linearly independent okay so according to this concept here three vectors are given but the dimension is a two so that's why we can say these vectors are linearly dependent so let us try in another way also now for example if we take this coordinate system x and y and i'm going to represent these vectors so here it is origin o and here it is uh, let us say 1 and this is a 2 and this is a plus 1 and here it is a 2 and here this is a negative axis that's why this is a minus 1 okay so now the first vector 1 comma minus 1 this is the vector 1 and second vector is 1 comma 2 so this is the second vector 1 comma 2 and this is a 2 comma 1 which is a, a third vector if you see carefully so if you see carefully the first vector is in the span of uh, these v2 and v3 that means v2 and v3 sorry v1 is spanned by v2 and v3 so we can write like this v1 is spanned by is spanned by v2 and v3 so what is the meaning of this let us suppose there is a real space three dimension what are the unit vectors i cap j cap k cap of course these are the basis states what is the meaning of that if you want to write any vector you have to write as a linear combination of i cap j cap k cap in three dimension so that means that a 3d real space is spanned by i cap j cap k cap so if you want to write any 3d vector you have to write it as a linear combination of uh, i j k similarly whenever v1 is spanned by v2 v3 we can write this v1 as the linear combination of the linear combination of the linear combination of v2 and v3 okay so for example if you take this uh, v v2 1 2 and here it is a 2 1 if i take minus here and plus here i will get uh, sorry here it is a 1 and minus 1 that's it so so these are the uh, three cases n greater than m always uh, linearly dependent uh, n equal to m or n less than m we have to find the determinant but we may get doubt whenever n less than m we can't write it as a square matrix determinant exists only for square matrix no need to worry so that means you are having one column short that's why you can take that one column as all ones one 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 and find the determinant and same rule same rule if a determinant equal to 0 linearly dependent determinant is not equal to 0 linearly independent so this is our uh, next question 
So here they defined one linear operator A uh, like this. A operates on uh, ket 0 computational basis 1 and uh, A operates on 1 we got uh, ket 0. First they are asking the matrix representation of A. But see here they are asking first one input basis and output basis are same. That means we have to take a computational basis as a input and output basis. Okay, so here I am taking this uh, operator representation by taking input basis 0 comma 1 and output basis also ket 0 ket 1. Okay, and how to represent this in the matrix form? Just take this uh, way, this is the operator A. Here always we have to take a input basis and here we have to take a output basis. Now input basis ket 0 and ket 1, output basis ket 0, bra 1, sorry, bra 0 and bra 1. Some people are writing here a ket 0, a ket 1, but I think this is the better representation. Now A operates on 0, what we are getting 1. So whatever you are getting, that will be making inner product with this output basis. If you make the inner product with this output basis, here you will get 0, here you will get 1 because 1, 1, this inner product, bra 1 and ket 1, inner product is equal to 1. Similarly, if A operates on 1, what we are getting 0. Whatever you got, just take it and make the inner product with out, output basis. That is 0 into 0, that is a 1 and here it is 1 and it is a 0, it is a different, that is why it is a 0. <coughs> so finally we got this matrix representation 0, 1, 1, 0. And here in the second part what he is asking, he is asking to represent A by taking a different basis. Okay, so let us take like this. Now here I am taking input basis as 0 and 1 which are computational basis and output basis I am taking as a diagonal basis plus minus. So you know what are these uh, diagonal basis plus is equal to 1y root 2 ket 0 plus ket 1 and uh, this minus which is a linear combination of a computational basis 0 minus 1. Okay. Now let us represent this operator in the matrix form. I told you already, here you have to take input basis which are 0 and 1 in our case and here we have to take output basis which are diagonal basis like this. Now how to write this element? This is A11, first row, first row, first column. So here A11 equal to first row plus operator first column 0. That means A operates on 0. If A operates on 0 already defined, we got 1. So this is the inner product of plus and 1. If you make the inner product of plus and 1, what you will get here? This coefficient, how much? 1 over root 2. And similarly, if you find uh, A12, again first row, second column. So plus operator second column 1. So A operates on 1 we got 0. So this is a nothing but inner product plus and 0. If you take this inner product this plus and 0 here you will get this coefficient which is equal to 1 by root 2. So here I have done this 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2. So I request you please do this yourself this and this. This is nothing but A21. So second row, first column minus A get 0, just operate and here you will get a minus 1 by root 2 and here you will get a 1 by root 2. So I request you please do this yourself. Then we got the matrix representation of A but remember we have changed the output basis as a plus and minus. So this is a 1 over root 2, 1, 1, minus 1, 1. So if you want further more exercise, uh, you can change the input basis as a diagonal basis and output basis as a computational basis or 
input and output bases both are uh, diagonal bases you can try yourself and if you have any doubt please contact